Welcome to the March 1st, 2021 Frankfurt Village Board meeting. We call this meeting to order and we'll ask our clerk, Brian Fear, to take the roll, please. Mayor Holland. Here. Trustee Petro. Here. Trustee Farina. Here. Trustee Borelli. Here. Trustee Clavio. Here. Trustee Ogle. Here. Trustee Severia. Here. Let's just hear Attorney Mahoney. Here. Attorney Lamore. Here. Chief Barica. Here. Administrator Pisha. Here. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> the next item on our agenda this evening is what we call the unanimous consent agenda. All items on the unanimous consent agenda are considered routine in nature and will be voted on after a single motion. If one of the trustees wants to discuss one of those items in more detail, we'll just remove it from the consent agenda. So I first ask, do any trustees want to remove any items from the consent agenda? Not hearing any, I would entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. A motion by Trustee Ogle and a second by Trustee Farina to approve the consent agenda. We certainly do want the people here in our boardroom uh, to know something about the items that we're voting on and of course the people at home who are watching uh, this broadcast. So we'll go over each one of them just briefly. First item is the approval of the minutes from our last meeting on February 16th. Second item is the approval of the bills and we'll go to the chair of our finance committee, Trustee Severia for a report on the bills. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The bills tonight equals $755,202.72. Um, some of the larger ticket items making up this amount include $248,181.20 to Austin Tyler Construction for the Prestwick Water Main Replacement Project. Um, we had a line item for $55,927.71 to Compass Minerals America for Road Salt and $83,938 to Phelps Chevrolet for the purchase of two Chevy Silverados. That concludes the bills tonight. Thank you, Gene. And then we have one item from our plan commission and we go to the plan commission liaison, John Clavio for a report on that issue. Thank you, Gene. Before tonight, the board of arts, commercial arts special use, which is located at 10850 Railway Road, Unit 13. This is more of a housekeeping matter than anything else because they were previously given a special use permit and their landlord had to ask them to switch locations facility as the ordinance states special use permits do not follow businesses uh, to them so they had to come back in and apply for a special use permit for their new space um, and that's what it is so before it's the applicant Al Alores Martial Arts requests the granting of special use permit to relocate their martial arts business from unit 3W to unit 3E within the heritage plaza located at 10850 railway road to accommodate the proposed use at their new location Thank you, John. And those are all of the items on the consent agenda this evening. Is there anyone in the audience who wanted to comment to the village board uh, about any of these items uh, before we deliberate and go to the vote? Not hearing any, any questions or comments from the trustees? Well, then we'll go to our clerk, Brian Fury, for the vote. Trustee Farina. Yes. Trustee Borelli. Aye. Trustee Petro. Yes. Trustee Severia. Trustee Ogle? Yes. Trustee Clavio? Aye. Motion carries. Next item on our agenda this evening is what's called the Mayor's Report. The first item on the Mayor's Report is a liquor lord, uh, ordinance amendment. 
And this evening, an amendment to the liquor license uh, ordinance authorizing the reclassification of Cultivate Community Tables liquor license from E3 to E1 comes before the board for its consideration. Uh, this change in classification will accommodate Cultivate Community Table uh, request to sell alcoholic liquor. Right now, they have a beer and wine license. This would allow them to sell beer, wine, and spirits. So um, I would entertain a motion to waive the first and second readings and pass an ordinance amending the Village of Frankfurt Code of Ordinances, Chapter 113, Intoxicating Liquor, to reduce the number of Class E3 liquor licenses from two to one and increase the number of Class E1 liquor licenses from three to four. Is, oh, is there a motion? No, I got to get somebody else to make the motion. I just read it. I'll second. So you're making the motion, Adam, and Gene is seconding. Uh, is there any discussion on this? Margaret, please. Yes, thank you, Mayor Helen. Just a clarification. So will there be liquor served on the patio that's outside with the fence? in that patio area? The permit allows that. They have a special use permit for outdoor seating, and I think anything they serve inside then can be used under that special use permit. Wouldn't that be right? And then there's sometimes bistro tables set up in the patio that's on the pavers that I believe is our property. Oh, that's are a they good point. Are they allowed to serve liquor on the patio like where kids are eating ice cream on a bench across from it? Well, I don't know if we've ever specifically defined that to them, but my opinion would be as the liquor commissioner, no, because it's not fenced in. Okay. It's not clearly delineated, and I think that that's the way our code enforcement would interpret it too. Correct, yeah, they, we probably just have to have a conversation with them to say that they, technically they should be near the pavers out there, but we're having, you know, making them wish that they know that they're Yeah, we need to make that clear. Correct. Um, I don't think the police force wants them drinking out there with no fence whatsoever. And we probably, they probably ought to have more clear posting too of no alcohol beyond this point because I don't think they have that there. Yeah, uh, and the bistro tables I think are an added good point. value on the pavers and I know it's something our resident residents enjoy and I appreciate that. So I would be a proponent of keeping the bistro tables, but I do appreciate from a liquor commissioner point keeping them behind the, the gate and on the patio within the open bottle. Yes, the alcohol should be behind a, we've always said it has to be an appropriate barrier that you cannot easily step over. And then it needs to be marked that no alcohol beyond this barrier, okay. beyond this point. So let's make sure we do that with these fellows. Great. All right, thank Good you. Good point. That answered my Anything question. Anything else? Uh, then we'll go to our clerk, Brian Peary, for the vote. Trustee Borelli, Trustee Clavio, yeah. Trustee Farina, yeah. Trustee Ogle, yeah. Trustee Petro, yeah. Trustee Severio. Yeah. Motion carries. The next item is titled, Passing of One of Frankfurt's Champions. Well, what a appropriate uh, statement. This is about uh, Richard Trevarthen, uh, better known to most of us as Dick. Uh, Dick was a longtime resident of Frankfurt who served the village as trustee for 32 years. Uh, Dick had a very positive impact on our community. Uh, Crestwick Country Club and golf course just wouldn't be what it is today uh, without Dick working there for over 30 years. A lot of people don't know that, but he worked there for a long time. Our Little League baseball fields, and in particular the one near this a facility here on the Borg Warner property uh, were literally built by uh, Dick. Uh, the appearance of the landscaping all over our community, the laws that we have that require the um, developers, uh, especially the commercial developers, to put in extra landscaping, to keep the signs minimal, to uh, have less asphalt in the parking lot, just as much as is necessary, uh, makes our community look different than any other community. And Dick was very instrumental in those laws. Even the quality of our public works equipment, the ability of our people to get out there and plow the roads and to work with top-notch equipment, 
outside, even the police equipment. Dick always said he'd, he'd be stingy on the stuff. He'd say, do you really need it? And uh, once we all agreed that we needed it, then he said, get the best. Don't, don't go cheap on any of these big machines and such. And we would, we would get the best. That was an influence of Dick on our community. Uh, even at Lincoln Way East uh, High School, uh, when I moved here, uh, it was just, it was in February when I first came out with my children to look at where I was moving to from Southern California. So it had that brown grass uh, up to just a brick building. And, and frankly, without any landscaping whatsoever except the grass, and the grass was, of course, it was winter in the Midwest, and so it was all dead. Our kids looked at it and they thought it was a prison. <laughs> and I said, well, what kind of a school is that? What a goofy looking situation. We got a new superintendent in. He worked with Dick Trevarthen and the landscaping at all four of these high schools was done by Dick Trevarthen and he designed it and he installed it. And frankly, I think it's made the education for our students better. Dick really contributed uh, to our community and certainly our thoughts are with uh, Dick's family in their uh, time of mourning. And I do thank the staff. Uh, today was Dick's funeral and on the procession from St. Peter's Church to the funeral home, there was a whole line of village equipment. All these trucks were out there uh, and, and it was impressive indeed and the family really did appreciate it. It was a very nice uh, tribute. Uh, to Dick, and he had been so instrumental over the years in our public works department as the chairperson of the operations committee. So thank you to the staff on that issue, and he had a nice escort by the police department. So uh, it was great. Um, the Frankfurt Police Department earns the Lexapol Connect 2020 Gold Award. Well, why am I reporting that, John? This is a congratulations to you. That's all I'm going to say, and you tell us what it's all about when it gets to your report. But this is a wonderful thing, and we're, we're <coughs> pleased uh, that that happened. And then a Will County COVID-19 hotline. Uh, Will County residents who are interested in getting the COVID-19 vaccine can register at willcountyhealth.org. Uh, the Will County Health Department will contact you to schedule an appointment based on the IDPH uh, vaccine distribution plan. We're in phase 1B. That's people over 65 years old. And folks... Uh, in the beginning, this thing didn't seem to do anything. You, you called a phone number and you got on this website and it didn't do anything. I can tell you at a later date, I got a information back from the county that the website is up and it's working. And I went to the website and about two weeks from that day, I could get a shot. So, because I'm over 65, folks, if you didn't know. Uh, not because I'm old only because I'm over 65, but uh, hopefully by the time most of our residents uh, get to the point where they're eligible for the shot, it, it'll be a smooth process. It's been a little confusing for most of we older people, this, to say the least. Um, but it's, I think it is getting better, and of course this new shot that was available starting today, the Johnson & Johnson shot, is going to help. So let's get this disease over with. Get your shot. Um, that concludes the mayor's report. So we'll go to our police chief, John Barica, for the police department report. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. First, of course, we'd like to uh, also offer our condolences to the Carson family. Um, although we know Dick did love the public works uh, the best, uh, he was always a big supporter and a friend of the PD, always having the best interests of the community in mind with all of uh, his decisions. Uh, he'll be missed. On uh, the second part, as you spoke about Lexapol, uh, that is a uh, policy manual that we have, uh, subscription for policy manual. Uh, it regularly updates our policies uh, every six months uh, approximately, and it's really nice to have because when things like uh, House Bill 3653 come along and uh, have all of these regulations and all of these updates in them, uh, many of their common sense of reforms uh, that didn't make sense were already in our manual and had been there for many years. Uh, we started using that over 15 years ago, I think, actually. Uh, Village Administrator uh, Pisha when he was the police department brought it in and we continued on with that, uh, but definitely keeps us up to date. And uh, by doing that, I, I think we stay ahead of all of these issues that are coming out there. 
Um, also remind, remind, me public, uh, remind the residents, uh, the public works and utility workers uh, will always be in village trucks and have on village uniforms if they come to your home. They will not ask to come into your home unless you have an appointment with them uh, or unless you've requested for them to come there. Uh, we still see some of these ruse burglaries. Unfortunately, we had one in Frankfurt um, where somebody posed as first the, uh, to check their electric and then said they were at the water department. Um, you should not allow anybody in your outside your house if you have any concerns or are unaware. By all means, call us. Uh, these tend to go with our senior citizens is what they tend to uh, try to um, go to as their victims. So call us anytime if you're not uh, comfortable with who's coming in or if you're not sure. We're happy to come by and check them out for you. Uh, we also want to wish uh, CSO Luke Holman uh, good luck as he heads off uh, to St. Charles Police Department where he's been hired uh, to build the police academy. He's been CSO for us for about three years, well, about three and a half years, and has been really a, a great CSO, um, community service officer for us. And we're happy to see him and wish him well in his new endeavor uh, going up there to get a police officer uh, full-time job. And finally, of course, lock your doors, close your garages, never leave your keys or key fobs in your car, and just remember the hashtag 9pm routine. And that's all I have tonight. Thank you, John. And now for the Village Administrator's Report, we go to Village Administrator Rob Tuchel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, first thing, obviously, uh, uh, condolences to uh, the Trevartan family uh, and the passing of Dick Trevartan. Had the opportunity to work uh, with him uh, almost my entire career, and he was a great guy and uh, really enjoyed him. And his, I'm sure he'll want uh, everybody to remember is that we always need to, to move along smartly. So that was uh, his famous line. Also want to, uh, the condolences to the Mark family, uh, Chuck Mark, uh, who was the husband of uh, cl clerk, or, uh, who, uh, Johnny Mark, uh, he also passed recently. So our uh, condolences to the, to the Mark family as well. Also, this is kind of a strange time of year. Uh, we've had uh, the polar vortex, had more snow in February than we've ever had, and now we've had warm weather. Just want to remind uh, the residents to keep their kids off of the ice. It was uh, very thick for a long time, but uh, this warm up has created a, a very unique situation. So it still may look safe in some places, but I would ask that uh, to, to keep your kids off the ice because it is definitely not uh, safe to be on it anymore. And that's the end of my report. Thank you, Rob. And that brings us to the Village Attorney's Report. And we have with us this evening, Attorney Hannah Lamore and Attorney George Mahoney. Do we have a report tonight? Oh, what a shame. Well, thank you. Uh, and that brings us to the part of our meeting we call Other Business. And this evening, we're going to start with Trustee Borelli. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I just want to also pass along condolences to the Trevartan family. Um, you know, uh, Dick's presence on this, on this village is everywhere. Um, you shared that story with me yesterday about Lincoln Way East, and it's just, just one of uh, probably many like it. It's just really incredible. Um, when I first joined here in 2012, it was the operations committee, and uh, you know, Chairman Trevartan was very welcoming and, and uh, let me speak, and and, and uh, we're all kind of packed in that conference room back there, and it was it was a lot of fun. Those were the good old days, and uh, I remember sometimes the mayor and the former administrator would kind of be going off on tangents, and he would kind of reel it, reel it, and let, let's let, let's get this thing focused. So uh, I always appreciated that. I thought he was a great chairman. He's beloved by the beloved by the employees and the staff and that doesn't mean he didn't give it to them for free he you know he made sure that they needed that equipment but like you said he, he got them the best when, when uh, uh, he convinced them they needed it um, and it was exemplified by the that tribute today which was just uh, really cool so uh, we'll miss you Dick but uh, that's all I have there thank you Adam trustee Ogle yeah it's um, you know looking back uh, I was, I was appointed to the Operations Committee in 2007, and with then this first time I had, I had met Dick Trevartan. I didn't realize it. it's been just 14 years ago. And uh, all the, the time in between, whether we were out golfing or um, he would give as good as he got on some of these things. Uh, he was a tremendous man, um, and, and I, will, I will miss him very much. Um, Village Administrator Pisha, you know, brought up a very good point about, uh, you know, as, as the ice is thinning out. Uh, last year we had a, a near tragedy uh, where a young man fell through the ice. Uh, fortunately, his sister was able to uh, to summon help, and uh, we averted this, and, and we did bring him forward. She was she was uh, she was a hero, as well as the uh, the people who jumped in to help help him. But uh, uh, 
again, just be cognizant as, as this is warm, but very quickly that that ice is very thin and, and be careful out there. So uh, that's all I have tonight, Mary. Thank you, Keith. Trustee Farina. Thank you, Mayor Helen. I, I too want to acknowledge Dick Trevartan and his service and his family. And I always hear such wonderful things about him. I remember a candidate's forum at St. Peter's Church in his last race. And he was so to the point and he was funny. And I left there thinking, wow, this guy, he just says it like it is. And I appreciate that. Um, I wish I could have worked with him longer and learned from him. And certainly uh, his, family are, his family are in my prayers. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. Trustee Severia. Um, I do want to pass on my condolences to the Trevartan family. 32 years, it's uh, quite the legacy. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Jean. Trustee Petro. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to offer my sincere condolences to the Trevartan family. I actually can't put my finger on the first time I've met Dick, but I've heard so many stories about Dick since I have been young, and his um, mark is certainly in our community. I. I am one who loves quotes, and so I, I searched today for one that I think is great to speak to Dick's impact on our community, and that's our fingerprints don't fade from the lives that we touch by Judy Bloom. And it's so clear that his fingerprints are just all over this community. Um, so our, our, our sincere condolences and thoughts and prayers are with the family during this time. Also, as the snow is melting, um, there is less of a need for the fire hydrant clearing, but I just want to, again, thank staff for putting the opportunity to earn community service hours out there for our students. And in such a short time, it was a great success. We had 82 students participate in earning community service hours and clearing 258 hydrants. So way to go to all of our volunteers and what an excellent program that turned out to be. Thank you. Thank you, Jess. Trustee Clavio. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, usually we get to the point where Adam and I are in ditto people, and ditto just doesn't do it tonight. Certainly the passing of Dick, he just been the tone of his people, simply his group, his family. Um, he will be missed. It, it, you know, just like I said, his fingers were everywhere. Every time you look at a plant on our village grounds, it's, it's Dick. That's why we named the garden after him out the door there. Crosswick every time they're doing anything with Dick. And I didn't know the high school story, but certainly now I'll, I'll think of that as well. So um, prayers and thoughts for the family. And then also as Rob indicated, ditto with uh, Shelly Mark. Um, she was uh, our first woman village clerk, I believe. Is that correct? And a uh, long time politician, long time resident of Frankfurt. Um, so condolences to the Mark family as well. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, John and Clerk Fury. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I didn't know uh, Dick Trevartan very well, but <clears throat> Channel 6, uh, the board meetings were appointment uh, TV for me when, uh, when Dick Trevartan would have his uh, uh, landscaping tips. So I was uh, always looking forward to tuning in to when he would have his landscaping tips on at the board meetings. Also, um, early voting is going to be happening uh, pretty soon. It will be conducted at the Village Administration Building March 22nd through April 2nd, Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Vote by mail is also a safe and secure way for voters to complete their ballots in the privacy of their own homes. To receive a ballot through the mail, registered voters must first complete and submit a vote by mail application by visiting www.thewillcountyclerk.com. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Brian. This evening, is there anyone who would like to make a comment to the Frankfurt Village Board? Not hearing anyone, I would entertain a motion to adjourn. Thank you. Oh, sure. Very, uh, gave me an idea. I'm wondering if we have some video or some photos of Trustee Trevartan, and maybe we can do an in memory video for Channel 6 in our website and Facebook page, just showcasing his contributions over the years and, and just, you know, again, photos of him, meetings, snippets, and so forth. Uh, not, nothing, you know, maybe 60 seconds or something of footage. Uh, I'm 
sure our capable staff can take a look and see what we have. Okay. And I think see that if nice. there's something we can come up with. Maybe the family can help us. Yeah, that would um, be great. Mm-hmm. Yes, there yeah. were lots of photos there, and uh, it, it would be appropriate to relate it as much as possible to the village. So, see what we can do. Thank you. Good. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks yeah. for the suggestion. Mm-hmm. Any other comments for this meeting? Then we will entertain another motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. We have a motion by. Uh, Trustee Ogle and a second by Trustee Severia to adjourn. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? This meeting is adjourned.